Search my heart, search my mind, search my soul. Make me clean, make me new, make me whole. All of my plans, all of my dreams, I lay them down before your feet. And all of my time, all that is mine.
In the seventh chapter, we read one through six. In the seventh chapter, it says, Then after he said to the disciples, Let us go into Judea again. And the disciples said unto him, Rabbi, the Jews were but now seeking to stone you, and you are going there again? <coughs> Very simple, and we'll get to this second part in a minute. When Jesus determined that it was time to go to where Lazarus was, he told his disciples, he said, let's pack up, let's get everything ready. He said, we're going back to Judea. And the disciples were kind of like, I can imagine this. Uh, it's the same look on my kid's face when I tell them we're going to uh, Cage Cove. When we're in Gatlinburg, they're like, again? They done been there. It takes six hours to get there. And we've seen deer day. We've seen it. Um, but it's, it's that same look. And you can just kind of imagine the disciples sitting around a campfire, maybe drinking a cup of coffee. And, and Jesus said, pack everything up. We're going to Judea. And the disciples said, what? They tried to kill you the last time you were there. You know that they're going to stone you and us if we go. Are you serious? Then then Jesus answered says, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world, of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. We're going to take both of these scriptures, both sections of scriptures, and try to show you what was going on. When Jesus looked at his disciples, he told them, remember we swapped Lazarus for the church last week, that the church was dead or dying or very sick and they were wanting Jesus to come. And when Jesus told his disciples that we're going to Judea, get everything ready, we're going to Judea, the disciples heard that we're going back into the place where the church is, and don't you know they're going to kill us? As God began dealing with me with the scripture several weeks ago, I began to see there is no other death like trying to resurrect the church. Let me give you an example. Some of you men in here, some of the women maybe, maybe some of you have fought in war. Some of you went to Vietnam. Some of you spent nights leaned up against trees with ants all over you and, and people shooting at you in the whole nine yards. But if I was to ask you to stand and testify, you'd run like a bunch of scared rabbits. If I was to ask you to lead us in prayer, Lord, it, I can't go back. If I was to ask to do something that would ignite the church, and to call the church forward, there's none other that scares us to death like that. Because to be a leader inside of a church, to be one that stands, to be one that says, I'll be the martyr on this. I'll be the one that will stand up and do this. I'll be the one that will take the lead for the glory of God. I want you to know this morning that the disciples were saying, we'll, we'll get killed if we do that. I would rather die than I had to do that. That this morning, that as Jesus was telling them that if Lazarus is back there, the only way to resurrect the church is to go to where the church is and work inside of it to lift it up this morning. And I thought to myself that church, the one thing that has left us throughout our generation is testifying. We've allowed the devil to make it so big that it's almost impossible for anybody to stand up and say, Brother Mark, I want to tell you what God done for me this week. Where I seen God working at this week. It's almost impossible, man. I know I asked Jay to do the missions. Jay, I don't know what his idea of this is. We're going to find out this evening. But I thought about that when the revival of the crusade was going on, we handed out these yellow slips of paper. And we told people to go from door to door and invite everybody or hang on the door if nobody's at home. I, I want you to know that I didn't like doing that. Nor did you, did you? It's not comfortable knocking on somebody's door that you don't know. And, and I thought to myself, well, I'll just, and I'm just being honest, I'll just, it's the church's job. And I bet some of y'all thought that's the preacher's job. And I thought, well, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, nah, I ain't going to do that. And then Charles called. 
He said, I'm just going to go door to door, Brother Mark. Well, I had woke up that morning and I, I had this urgency about me that it, it, God's called me to go out door to door. He's called me to do this. And I've got to do this. If not lead by example, I've got to do this. And I started getting excited about it. And I started picturing myself knocking on doors and these beautiful, bright, friendly faces were going to come to the door going, praise God. That's just what I've been praying for. And you know what? I got excited about it. And, and I had a few things I had to do in the office this black morning. And I, I come up here and, and it seemed like I started tearing that few things out. And what should have took 20 minutes, it, it took a couple of hours, Tony. It just took a lot longer. And I thought, well, it's lunchtime now. Everybody. And it just kept dragging out because my body feared going to the people in Cherokee County and inviting them to church. The devil had made that such a huge thing in my mind. And after I did, I went to eat lunch. And Charles called. He said, well, he said, I'm fixing to, he said, I'm fixing to go door to door. I think he'd worked all night, been up half crazy. And he'd been up 24 hours. And I thought, well, if Charles can get out here and go door to door, surely I can. So I did. I got in that bundle of yellow things and I tore out down the road. And, and the first house I come to, the Lord, before I knew it, I was inside the house. And the woman just drug me completely inside the house. And there was a man there in a the recliner that was older and sick. And, and I began to talk to him about the Lord. And he began to talk to me about God. And, and man, I was there for 20 minutes just having a great time. The women in there were just laughing and going on. He, she said, I bet you they're one of the craziest ones you've met today. And I said, you are. I said, because you're the first ones I've talked to today. And I said, you may feel the whole head of it. Anyway, so we talked a little while, and I left there, and I went to another door. And the guy came to the door. Dogs was barking. He opened the door and more or less said, what? And I was really barking. <laughs> I said, we have a crusade up there. Not one church, all churches coming together. He said, sounds good. He shut the door. I thought, good to have you. So I went to the next door, and the next door, and the next door. And 99% of the people were friendly. They were smiling. Well, Brother Mark, I go, huh? Well, good, good. Keep Brother Ricky in shape. Well, I go to First Methodist. Well, good, good to have you. Well, I, I don't go to church. I've been looking for a church. Really? Let's talk a minute. And I thought to myself, all of this that I was sweating about, all of this that I was so scared about, and I'm the preacher. I'm talking to anybody. That's my wife. The devil had made that so big in my mind that when Jesus said, let's go back to Judea, what were they thinking? Are you crazy? Now I want you to see who they were talking to. Do you realize that on the Sunday mornings or Wednesday night when God impresses you to do something, that we look at God and go, are you crazy? I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. Don't you realize Fairview will eat me? And God, Jesus is like, what? And then he speaks this. He said, those who walk in the daytime, he said, they can see where they're going. He said, but those who walk around in the night, they can't see where they're going. They stumble and they fall. Jesus was telling you, listen, I know what I'm doing. You've got the Son of God, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one that is anointed by God, who God put on flesh and come down to this earth and walks among men. He said, listen, they ain't going to kill you unless I let them kill you. He said, listen, you've got the brightest light that has ever hit the base of this earth that's leading you and guiding you this morning. If you'll just walk in that light, I promise you, you won't even stomp your toe. So I want you to listen to this this morning. First of all, the disciples, all they could think about was death. I can't, I, oh, Lord. This is going to happen. I'm going to stand up and go to stutter. I'm going to say a cuss word in church. Jesus said, what? He said, if I ask you to do this, in church, I want you to think about it. What does God 
God ask us to do? You know, Sunday, with Bill, I was. I, I felt terrible. And, and Bill stood up and he done the craziest thing, didn't he? He said, our preacher's sick. We need to come pray for him. You know how much courage that took? For Bill to stand up to realize somebody else's weakness, I don't think it was Bill that realized it. I think it was the Spirit of God that nudged Bill. And Bill probably thought the first time, are you crazy? But God said, do it. And me, at my weakest point, because he was crazy enough to surrender his body a living sacrifice unto God, Bill stood up and said, our preacher's sick and he don't want to be here. He's come to feed us and we need to lift him up in prayer. And then the church come forward. But let me ask you, what if Bill would have stood and done that? Then I would have went up sick as a dog. I don't know how the message was rendered. And because at the time I was hacked out of my mind, fever. But I wondered this week as I sat around the house, I wondered, could I have stood if Bill would have done that? Church this morning that in order to resurrect the church, and not everything that comes through your mind is of God, but the things that come through your mind that are filled with the Holy Spirit that God is leading you to do it, honey, it will be all right. He said those who walk in the Spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh this morning. So even though when God asks us to do something, or God tells us to do something, the first thing that goes through our minds is the same thing that goes through the disciples' mind. Are you crazy, God? I can't do it. Jesus said, I will lead you. I will shine a light. I will be the, the stone that your foot hits on. He said, I will protect you. Even he told God, he said, Lord, I said, I'm not lost one that you've given unto me. That church, that the people that have the courage to stand up and be obedient to the Spirit of God are the same kind of people that leads nations to freedom. Remember John Hancock? He didn't want anybody. He knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to lose everything he had. But the cause and the reason he was doing it was worth signing his name big and plain. That this morning, that church, when I stand before God and the things that we are called to do by God, I want my name to be signed in big letters knowing that God, I stood up and I've done it. I faced death in the eye. I faced the being scared of the flesh and my flesh over it my spirit. That this week, each and every one of us will face this. Every one of us will. That we will see somebody and God will nudge us and just say something to them. Tell them about how good church was. Tell them about what, how God's done in your life. And that thing will come through your mind and you will look at God and say, Are you crazy? If it's a spirit, do it anyway. Do it anyway. At this point in church, that when Jesus got the call to raise Lazarus from the dead, he needed some men that were with him to be leaders. And the only way that we can be leaders through Jesus Christ is to lay down our lives for him. That he may live within us. That everything that we do in the spirit is scary. But the Bible said, he told the woman at the well, he said, there's coming a time that you can't worship him in the flesh, that he must be worshipped in truth and in spirit this morning. That praise God that every time we stand, whether it's to tell the goodness of God, or whether it's to sing a song, or whether it's to preach a message, or go see somebody, we're going to have to face the flesh every time. But it's when we can put our flesh to the back and let the spirit of God rise in front of us. Honey, God will provide a way. He'll make it a blessing for not only you, but whoever he sends you to, that what? That God will be glorified. Which takes us back. <laughs> so let's sum this up. I wonder what our church service would look like on Sunday morning if God wasn't so crazy. 
I remember our home church. A lot of times we wouldn't even get to house Sunday school. We would come in and sing a song. And Lord, somebody would get in the altar and go to pray. This one would stand up and go to testify. Patsy would have a song on her heart that God had moved her to. There would be people shouting and standing in the aisle. Three would get saved before 11 o'clock even got here. The preacher would get up and go to preaching. And people would just be a smile and people praying. And all kinds of things going on. And you say, no, Brother Barb, we're not Pentecostal. Honey, it was United Methodist Church. We will lay down our heart, lay down our life, and say, God, here am I. Use me. That this morning, the church things get out of hand. Don't you know? And I can't go this far. I can, but I'm not going too much. Even to the point when Jesus was fixing to call Lazarus out, they said, Oh, don't do that. He stinks. I want you to know this morning, not only have you been given the breath of life to praise God, not only have you been given everything that you've got to glorify God, the second reason that you're here is to call the Lazarus that are dead in this world alive. That my friend this morning is getting over our fears. That our fears are the biggest thing that so easily besets us. And because of our fears, thousands of folks will die and go to hell, and our church will eventually die. Because of our fears. Some of us this morning thought about putting our offerings in the plate. Some of us thought, hmm, didn't get to work much last week. I, I better write this a little shorter. Most money I've ever had is when I give God what He was. The worst money, worst economic times I ever had is when I cheated God and kept a little bit back for myself. It was like sand going through my hands. See, it was a time, every time in my life that I've ever been filled and anointed by the power of God is when my spirit overcame my flesh. And I was able to not tell God, you're crazy. God said, Brother Mark, you need to go. And I said, Lord, I'm going to get my boots on. That this morning the church, know this, that when you are obedient to the Spirit of God, God said, I'll be the light that lights your way. I'll be the one who leads you in the pathway. He said, you, won't have, you can drink something poison, it won't hurt you. He said, you can tread upon serpents and they won't hurt you. He said, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And it's when our spirit rises up, when two and three are gathered together, that our spirit rises up above our flesh. That's when we feel God in the midst. And that's when all kinds of things are breaking loose. It's when we walk in the light of God. Some of y'all look at me like I got four heads this morning. <clears throat> My flesh will never glorify God. Did you hear that? It's not my flesh that raises my hearts. It's when the spirit bubbles up inside of me and my spirit says, flesh, don't have a coke and a smile. We're in charge. That we got the courage to stand and lift up holy hands in the sun. That we've got the courage. How many times did your flesh keep you in the, in the bench when God was calling you to the altar? Did you walk away here blessed? No. But when our spirit bubbled up inside of us and, and we were obedient to what God was calling us to do, that we got to drink a fresh <coughs> glass of water out of the fountain of life. So this morning I want to encourage you that as we go toward Lazarus, as we go toward to rise the church up, don't be afraid. Be of good courage. Our God is with us this morning. And He can set this world on fire through us in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand with us. <coughs> Let me ask you a question. What is God call, What is God wanting you to do? And I'm not talking about calling to preach. What part of ministry has God called you in? Has God laid somebody on your heart and you just can't? I, I, Brother Mark, I just can't. Yes, 
that you can. Do you realize how many people, Brother Josh talked about this morning, in this county that's hurt, that's broken, that has no hope, that God has called you just to go by and say, had you on my heart, just want to come by and tell you I love you this morning. You need anything? Love will cover a multitude of sins. Courage to stand. One more. Mm. We had a meeting here a while back. And Jay, I was sitting here on this front bench. It was a board meeting. And Jay said, well, I think our pastor needs to go to Israel. And I said, no, he don't. If I can keep a redhead from shooting at me, I'm doing good. I don't need to go to Israel. And the more I thought about it, the more I prayed about it. Hmm. There's Christians right now being beheaded for being Christians. There's people in this world that are being persecuted. Church, it's time to rise up and not be afraid of what other people say about us, but walk in the strength and the light of God. Because you'll be surprised what God can do through you, through just a smile and a little bit of love. Let's sing this
This week as I began to think and I, I talked to one of my kids, our televisions, we've allowed stuff in our house we would never allow in our house. If you come into my house cussing, I throw you right back out in the yard. But yet I can overlook a few cuss words on TV. That's not a big deal. The things that we allow in our house, and at one time it shocked us, and nothing shocks us anymore because we've got used to it. He said, Don't be of this world. Everything that is of this world will perish. God ain't got used to it. He still calls us into a righteous and holy living. And I got on, I got news for you. You might not get to watch the most popular programs on TV, but if they go against your heart, you better leave them alone. Why? So that God will be glorified in you. The uh, man sings a song. It's slowly but surely. See, the devil, and gosh, I can't help it. The devil took our testimony from us. We didn't even know when it left. The devil will take our prayer life away from us, and we won't even notice it. The devil will take our love for our spouse away from us, and we'll wonder where, where he goes. And slowly but surely, and then the ones that was owned by our Christian will find themselves a shell of the person they used to be, having no joy and no peace. I want to tell you this morning, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That when we stand up, that we strengthen our spirit, because the living in this world that we live in and the ones that's coming, it's going to take some strong Christians <coughs> that's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There may be a blade to our head before it's all over. You want to live a few more days? And glorify God with your last breath. When bound being doing anything, he said, just stand. Just stand. It's fire heat. <clears throat> Father, this is a battle that we fight every day. Every day. That God, you say go, and we say no. No. No, uh -uh. Not realizing that we're looking at the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who made everything, the one that's in control. And we look at you and go, Father, you're crazy. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our lack of courage. <coughs> Strengthen us and shine the light in front of us again that we may step out and be about our Father's business. We know we're going to die one of these days, but really we're just going to begin to live. Father, I pray for my church that they may be the men and women that have the courage to stand that you might be glorified in them. All this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Shake hands. Yes, sir. Hold on.
difficult to see. He's only 68 years old. He thought he had a long, long life better to see the service. I think each and every one of us need to pass it to our hearts and minds. But a lot of people do. They have an institute that goes to the building of the church. And he'll say that, but he'll say this. Y'all remember that person that used to pray the kids came? Or had a pack of chewing gum? How hard is that? To be the guy that always had a piece of chewing gum for the kids. It might not mean that much. But I'm telling you, the only reason you remember it is because they were a blessing to you. Now, all of you can't be chewing gum people. But it doesn't take much to bring glory to God. And to bring a smile on people's face of hope. So pray about that. That God would use you to affect people's lives. Because guys, it's when we stand before God and God says, Son, whose life have you affected while on earth? And there's nobody there. It's the scariest thing. Don't you know how people lined up going? I tell you what, he was fat, he was bald headed, and he preached way too long. I love Brother Mark. He did the he, guys, that's what living is truly about. That God might be glorified in our lives. You talking about his funeral being preached, he preached in his life. But he did all the things you were talking about plus. Thank you.